Gutam Das was admitted to ICU with COVID-19 at the start of April 2020. I was uh, told, like, yeah, OK, we'll try to take you down for a day. And when I woke up, it was 5th of May. He doesn't remember much of his five weeks on life support, except the nightmares and struggling to breathe. It's almost like, you know, if somebody puts you in water, underwater, and say, like, OK, you stop, like, you can't breathe anymore. It's that kind of feeling, really, like, you know, you just desperate for oxygen. It was inflammation in Gutam's lungs, his immune response to COVID that nearly killed him. The same for the majority of patients critically ill with the virus. But their ordeal wasn't entirely in vain. He, along with thousands of other COVID ICU patients, allowed researchers here at the University of Edinburgh to sample their genetic code. Those genetic differences that we found in people like Gutam pointed towards potential drug treatments. They've now established a new hub at the university to turn those genetic clues from the pandemic into new drugs to fight inflammation, not just for treating COVID. Because the way the treatment work is to prevent your own immune system from destroying your lungs, um, I think there's, there's every reason to expect that they will also have some use in other conditions outside of COVID. But to make experimental drugs that work, they want to see them in action in real patients. So down the corridor, they're pioneering a technique to do that using donated human lungs. What we're trying to do here is to do this experimental medicine to understand if drugs are working in those furthest, most important regions of the human lung. And that hasn't been done. They're using a specially engineered fibre optic microscope fitted with a cannula to get the drugs to where they want them. But Tom has got a, a bronchoscope sitting here and that goes down the main airways. So he's now walking down the left main airway. As we walk deeper into the lung, you can see it starts splitting off to smaller branching airways. Once the probe is further down, where oxygen passes into the blood itself, they can administer their drug, this one designed to glow when it's at its destination. What you start to see then, these cells start to light up. This is the target now. By the end of the year, they hope to be testing the first drug that they've engineered here based on that genetic information they learned from the most seriously ill patients during the pandemic. But the next step is to use a miniaturised version of this robot to deliver those drugs into people's lungs in a much more precise and repeatable way, allowing them to spot the most successful drugs much more quickly. The robotics will be crucial. So within the human lung, which is the size of a tennis court, if you lay it out flat, it's a large playing field. Um, we want to be able to go back to precisely the regions we delivered and aspirated. We can't do that with a human hand. If they succeed, the aim is to use their robot to screen tiny doses of several experimental drugs at the same time in real patients with severe lung inflammation. It could help reduce the time to develop new gene-based drugs from decades to a few years. Not much good came out of the pandemic, but without it, we may have waited a long time for new ideas like this. Tom Clark, Sky News, Edinburgh.